Hello, I'm Rowan, and you can hear from some software engineers or you can find the same idea on some YouTube channels that math is not needed for software engineering. I strongly disagree with this statement and in this video I want to talk about this and I want to show you the concrete examples of areas in the software engineering when, where math is actually not just a requirement but it's kind of the foundation of the things that you want to implement. And around a year ago I created a video that is called, I think, do you need a math to start software engineering? I will put the link into the description and it should be shown here. But today I want to go with a different approach and, and I would try not to talk in an abstract way that math teaches you this structural thinking and thinking in algorithms. I mean, I still believe it's true, but it's very hard to actually give some arguments to support this statement. So what do we do here? I will show you concrete examples. I would go, I think, with five areas with examples of the parts of the math that you actually need, well, in order to be able to implement certain things. And you might think that those areas are quite unique and maybe not that popular. And I would tell you that it's actually the opposite. Most likely you use most of these products, or I mean the products from these areas, probably every day. So let's start. And the first thing I want to talk about is, surprise, surprise, is the machine learning. I mean, in general, if you very simplify what is, what is the neural network is, it's just the tons of the matrix multiplications and calculation of some mathematical functions. I started another channel where I do some live coding videos and currently I'm studying the book that is called Neural Networks from scratch in Python, but I'm just writing everything with a goal just to make it more challenging for me because, well, with the Python, I think more things are actually very easy to skip, I mean, skip on understanding. And when you need to rewrite it with something verbose like Golang, you actually need to understand certain things. And several chapters, I mean, in the first half of the book, several chapters were dedicated to what is a derivative and why it is important in the neural network. For example, at first you need to remember what is the dot product between vectors and between matrices. Then you need to remember what the derivative is and what are the rules around the derivative for the complex functions. And then at some point you need to implement some code to find an optimal way. I mean, to, for example, to find an global minimum, what is the difference between the global minimum and the local minimum? And it's needed to train the model to reach the best possible state. And it's just some of the examples that are needed for you to understand what is actually happening inside the neural network and how you can consciously tweak things and, you know, produce new model architecture or find a way to better adjust hyperparameters for the model training and so on. And you can say that the machine learning right now, I would say the most hot topic in the tech industry. I, I see that, well, more and more companies trying to incorporate the machine learning into their products. If you want to try to understand what is happening inside and, for example, how the layers are connected to each other and what is the forward path, what is the backward path, yeah, you just need to know basic things. Otherwise, you won't be able to understand most likely what is happening inside and you will need to dive into specific parts of it anyway. The next area I want to talk about is the development of the robots. Like, for example, probably you have this robot vacuum cleaner that goes around the, your apartment or around your house and or you might find way more better and complex examples like for example things that Boston Dynamics built with their robots like you know this dog robot or the Atlas I think their latest revision was presented a couple of months ago and you can say that it's far away from something like mobile development or I know, backend development or the front end. You need to process the data from lots of the different sensors and calculate, for example, the position of the robot, how it can reach a certain destination, how it can do a certain thing. So even, for example, just imagine how would you build 
a stabilization of the robot, of the standing robot with the two legs. It might sound like an easy task because that's what you, but that's most of us do like day to day because we can walk, but trying to teach it, uh, you know, a piece of the hardware to do this, not an easy thing. And for example, just for analyzing the motion, the velocity, the acceleration, or being able to implement uh, the Pathfinder algorithms, you will need something like the calculus or linear algebra or geometry. And it's just a part of the things you need to know. The third bucket I would like to describe, even if it's connected to others, and that is multimedia analyzing and the processing, like for example, editing of the images, videos, or audio. I would say in today's internet, the images and the audio and the videos are the most used type of the type of the data. And there are tons of the algorithms around all of the three categories, like the classic one or some ML based. And here we'll just, you know, focus a little bit on non ML based algorithms. I'm working a lot with the image editing, such as manipulations, editing, filtering, augmentations of the pixel data or of the frames. And you need to know at least what are the basic vector operations. For example, if you want to implement some custom blur, usually you will find, well, right now you can find lots of the already implemented code, but for example, in general, all of these algorithms can be described in some mathematical notation and you can take a look at this and you will know how to transform them into the code. And then you can add in this bucket things like analysis of the images or of the audio. And especially I was amazed when I started to record videos for the YouTube and I started to edit the audio. Well, I do basic editing and I was amazed how many things is implemented for the audio processing. Most of these algorithms, again, can be described in some mathematical notation because you have the data, you have the function that does something with this data. Most of the complex algorithms are based on the basic math. No, I mean, not I mean on the basic math. It's usually based on the foundations of the math that you need to understand. And without that knowledge, you will probably you'll have two options. You won't be able to implement this or you will need to, again, learn it a little bit. Another group of the software engineering, I would say, is the optimization algorithms. And you can find a need to optimize something in various places in the software engineering. Even on the front end development and mobile development, you need to need to use the resources that you have in a very optimal way. Otherwise, well, your application most likely will be very laggy. Or for example, in a mobile development, if you want to do image processing and so on, you need to implement it in a very optimal way. Otherwise you will just drain the whole battery. Your phone will be very, very hot and nobody will use it. But if you take a look at the very big companies, I don't know, like, let's take a look at something like Metascale or the Google scale. They have tons of the servers to run, for example, the search engine. So for example, you're implementing an optimization that can save, that can save the company half of the percent of the cost. It will, it will make a big difference because on the scale of such large companies, it's a lot of the money and you can be a very valuable person if you can do certain optimization or you want to implement an algorithm that will balance the workload between your available backend servers and there are many different algorithms how you can do this. Some of them are pretty random. Some of them are more sophisticated. Many optimization algorithms involve probability and statistics to analyze certain data and adjust things or provide you enough information so you can do an informative decision. Or for example, the discrete mathematics that is used a lot, for example, in the networking, because you need to, well, usually you want to create the most optimal route between one node and another. And it's, there are tons of the algorithm on top of the graphs to do this. The same applies for the, for example, for the pathfinder, pathfinding algorithms in the maps engine, like 
Google Maps and others. So don't think that if you want to, if you want to be able to optimize your code, optimize the algorithms that you're writing, you can just do it, you know, without any background. And it, it usually it involves both computer science background and the math background. And the next bucket is graphics and the game development. And here by game development, I would not consider a development of the game itself, because first, I'm not an expert in this. And the second, as far as I know, building the game itself using the, using the tools like the game engines is a very different skill rather than, for example, building a, a game engine. So I will focus on the graphics like rendering techniques, etc., and the development of the tools. And for example, in the company where I'm working right now, we are building the vector-based drawing tool, and you cannot just implement the algorithms, I mean, on top of the rendering without even a basic understanding of the linear algebra and the geometry, well, at least. And I'm not talking about that the, all of the vector-based tools, like two 2D, 3D, they all, they all of them usually based on the busy curves, and it would be nice to have a basic understanding of the busy curve and how you manipulate with them. For example, in our company, we have several people who are specialized just in implementation of the algorithms on top of the busy curves. Or for example, think about implementation of the tools like, I don't know, like Unity, Unreal Engine or others. And if we'll take the visual part, I mean, it's just, at least it's all about geometry because all of the models that you have, all of the things that you render on the screen, it's all some sort of the shape. And of course, on top of this, we can add things like audio processing because all of the game engine tools have to work with the audio. You can add optimization algorithms because you usually want to have the best quality of, of an image on the screen. You want to have the best quality of the audio and not everyone has the top latest hardware, so you need to optimize as much as possible, well, if you want, to produce the better result. And you can see from the things that I mentioned and from the things that have been shown on the screen, there are some deviations, but more or less they are the same. And it's just a couple of examples. Of course, in some cases you need something very basic, in some cases you need something very robust, but the whole idea was to show you that you can expand the number of the areas and well you can expand the possible areas where you can work as a software engineer if you have this knowledge so for example even if you'll know the linear algebra geometry calculus it even expands areas where you can work on and the things that you can implement of course if all you do is the creation of the website using something like wordpress or other cmas based websites engines then probably you don't need this information, but I think you're just losing lots of the opportunities in the software engineering or in, the, well, in the tech industry itself. Because the more knowledge you have, not just of the concrete tools or programming languages, but also these foundational concepts like the math, the physics, you can expand the number of opportunities you can accept in the in the tech industry. So if you think that math is not a part of the software engineering, I hope I changed your mind and at least I've shown you some examples where it can be used. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.